It happens every time. Customer purchases new Tesla. Customer brings new Tesla to me to ceramic coat. And I can't remember from the last time how to unlock the door. Is it here? Is it? Scotty. Screw this. After watching this, I felt comforted the fact that 1.1 million other people had the same exact problem as me. So after watching a quick YouTube video, Interior for a Tesla, personally, I'm not the most impressed with them. The finishes, their carpet sometimes can be really difficult to work on as for a detailer, but they do have nice weather mats. They have white vegan leather seats for those that go with that color. They do have black ones. So let's go ahead and just show you guys a quick peek at the interior. Uh, once you have your key card, you're just gonna kind of lay it down inside the vehicle and the vehicle is already on it's already running it's very silent so what we're going to actually do is we're going to put it in drive using our turn signal here you can see it's in drive and pretty much everything happens on this pad here but we're going to go ahead and get this pulled into the garage for those of you new to the channel i actually have a home-based detailing business that i have been operating for over five years this customer just purchased this vehicle and wants us to apply a ceramic coating to it. And fortunately, yet unfortunately, it started to rain as soon as we started to wash it. So we're doing a little bit of good old car therapy. We're gonna actually wash it with just a standard hose and prep it in the rain. There was a lot of beading on this paint. There was some sort of protection put on it by the dealership, but we use McKee 37, their coating prep wash to remove any of the protection that was on there. You can we did a good chemical decon clay tail treatment to decontaminate the paint, gave it a good rinse. We're gonna go ahead, dry it off and get ready to apply our coating. But I'm gonna share with you guys some insider tips on detailing Teslas. I love working on Teslas. As a detailer, here's some of the things that I love about it. We've got an entire roof that's made of glass, so I don't have to polish that. Their front grills, there's not a lot of intricate parts. It's kind of a big flat panel, so I don't have to deal with coating intricate pieces. Uh, they do have a lot of plastic trim that you just want to be careful that you don't get polish residue on them. But even the very lower bottoms of this model vehicle, it's all plastic trim, which is great because oftentimes those are the parts of the vehicle that are going to get scratched the most um, from rock chips and things like that. And so you don't have to worry about kind of dialing uh, the lower parts of the vehicle in. They have very few, you know, as far as trim pieces, very easy to tape off. If you want, you can tape off kind of your trim pieces here. If you want to tape off the Tesla emblem, you can, but these are actually pretty easy to get polish residue out of. Um, these aren't super raised, so it's pretty easy to clean them. Um, so for those of you that, you know, get nervous, they do have their electrical port back here. So you just have to be a little bit careful about that. This paint is gonna be pretty easy to polish. Another thing is you don't have door handles that you have to worry about because they're flush. So I like Tesla's as a detailer for that aspect. Interior wise, it's a whole nother story, but exterior wise, hopefully tomorrow we'll have a pretty easy day. So we're gonna let this continue to dry. We'll see you back day two in the morning. So I just got done doing my first couple test spots with polishes and pads and I figured out what we're going to use uh, moving forward after about the third product. But let me just kind of quickly show what I was getting and where we landed with our polish and pad. For those of you that maybe you need some recommendations on products to use for Tesla paint. So your test spot is essentially your baseline for how you're going to proceed with correcting the paint. I always recommend start off with the least aggressive and work your way forward. If you find that with a least aggressive method, you are getting decent correction, finishing down well, then you don't need to necessarily step it up in aggression. And that's going to be more conservative on your clear coat. 
uh, and just help you finish down a little bit better. Sometimes if you start off too aggressive, you're gonna have marring, you're gonna have hazing, and you're removing more clear coat than you may necessarily need to, even if it's a new car. I always start off with a white foam pad, a finishing polish of some sort. We tried out in the Keys 37, their spray correcting polish. And even though that was a very gentle process, um, somewhere, either the pad or the polish, you can see right around our light, we have just kind of these little ticks around the light, and that's actually micro marring. We weren't removing a whole lot of the defects either. We were having some ghosting left behind with the pad, so obviously those two products were not the products to use. We stepped it up then to Phoenix EOD, their finishing polish, and an orange foam pad, thinking, well, maybe that will kind of remove the marring, remove the ghosting. It did remove the ghosting, but it didn't remove uh, too many of the defects, and we still had a tick of micro marring. Then I realized, well, this was just sent to me the other day for me to test out, and this is DIY Detail, their gold standard. Uh, this is new from Ivan LaCroix, Nick McGurk. They have their entire line of products, actually, that they just sent to me. I've been working with a couple of them. I've been absolutely loving their rinseless wash, their quick beads, their ceramic boost, their interior ceramic protectant. They sent me some other products that we're gonna be doing videos on shortly. It is a yellow waffle pad. Typically yellow pads are more firm. They're more aggressive with correction. I was worried that it wasn't going to work. But if you can actually see up here, we were able to remove all the defects on the paint. We don't have that micro marring around our light. We don't have any sort of ghosting whatsoever. So this did a fantastic job on even this Tesla paint. So I was very, very happy, impressed. And what we're actually doing, I only have one pad that they sent me, which Ivan and Nick, can you send me a few more? <laughs> because I'm really loving this, but I'm not gonna freak out about just having one pad for this entire vehicle because we actually have two buckets here with their Swiss wash. I'm gonna use this one to wipe off my polish residue and then we'll follow up with a drying towel and it will help remove the polish residue safely and leave behind a squeaky clean surface. But I also have some of the rinseless wash in this bucket here and we're gonna wash the pad after every panel so that way I can clean out the polish residue, any sort of clear coat, make sure it is clean, it is damp, and it is primed and ready for me to just work effortlessly around this vehicle. So you don't need five to 12 pads. You can use one as long as you are cleaning it properly. I've been actually doing this a lot for my standard procedure with polishing. I've been using the rinseless wash to wipe off residue and the rinseless wash to keep my pads clean. They've been performing extremely well. It's just helped me be a little bit more efficient and work clean for my vehicles. As someone who details cars professionally, I'm always keeping my eye out for new products that hit the market, especially products and processes that are designed to help you become more efficient. And that is honestly what Yvonne LaCroix and Nick McGurk are all about. They want to kind of simplify the detailing process. And so I, I was really excited to test these products out and I feel like they do exactly what they're designed to do. They kind of help simplify the detailing process which in turn will help you become more efficient and also help you become more profitable. Um, but even if you're not a professional detailer and you're just doing this for your own personal vehicles, you don't wanna have to purchase multiple products and spend hours upon hours working on paint. This is the type of product and process that will give you great results be mindful of the clear coat, but also be mindful of how much time you're having to spend and invest into getting your vehicles dialed in. This is just gonna really help you enjoy the process of detailing, but get better results quicker. Now, for those of you that might be wondering, why is it that if she's working on soft paint, a soft pad or a finishing polish didn't finish down as well as these products? Well, it's actually a twofold reason that Ivan LaCroix explained it to me that one, it's the pad choice that I was using. I had a flat pad for those first two test spots. The waffle pad that they designed with this system is actually going to help keep the panel cooler and the pad cooler. And so oftentimes it will finish down better on softer paints versus a flat pad. But the second reason is actually the polisher that I was using. Dual action polishers are going to oscillate in two different directions. And on soft paints, if you have a soft pad, what can happen is that as that backing plate is oscillating back around, it's gonna create a lot of friction uh, as it's kind of throwing it back into the direction that it needs to go. And so oftentimes that can result in marring and ghosting. So a good tip with polishing soft paints, if you find that you're having difficulty finishing down well, 
try a waffle pad that's going to keep the panel cooler, keep the pad cooler, but also increase the firmness of the pad so that way you're not having as much of that friction. Now because we only have one pad for this entire vehicle after each section, we're going to wash our pad in our rinseless wash. I'm just kind of using my thumb to kind of push all of that polish and any sort of the residue out of the pad, giving it a good squeeze, turning on my polisher on high speed to kind of wring it dry. And it is clean, cool, and primed and ready for me to continue to work seamlessly around this vehicle. And here's just a quick visual demonstration for you of its correctability. We were able to very easily remove any of the minor swirls and defects on the paint and finish down to pretty much paint perfection with a very simple and easy process. So we are finally all done with polishing this beautiful Tesla Model Y. Paint turned out fantastic using our DIY detail gold standard. We only had one pad for this entire vehicle. And again, we were able to use our DIY detail rinseless wash. We had two buckets mixed up here. This was to clean our pad in between panels, spin it dry, and it was primed, cooled, clean, ready for us to continue to polish. But then after polishing, we were able to use the rinseless wash to wipe off all of our polish residue safely. So that way we weren't having to exhaust ourselves, wiping off polish residue, potentially scratch the paint, being too aggressive. But this was perfect for this paint. Turned out beautifully. We did two or three quick passes. In about an hour and 20 minutes, we were able to polish this entire vehicle. And now we're ready to go ahead and apply our coating. So we are all done applying our McKees 37 graphene ceramic coating. This is their original formula. It's gonna give you anywhere from three to five years of protection based on how you maintain it. And I've done tons of videos on this product already. So for those that would like a closer look at applying this product, it's very easy. Uh, I will put the links to those videos that I've done down below in the video description box. But here is our finished result for our Tesla. When it comes to detailing or maintaining Tesla paint, it can be very difficult sometimes to try to figure out the right products, the right combination. So hopefully these tips can help those of you out that might be working on Tesla paint and give you the same kind of results. So we are all done with our Tesla. It was actually a really relaxing day. We were able to polish the vehicle in under two hours, coat it in another hour. So three hours total for polishing and coating it and probably around an hour for our prep. So realistically, we had about five hours total from start to finish to wash, decontaminate, polish, coat everything. We did have a little bit of detail work to do as far as protecting our wheels and coating the glass and things like that. But all in all, really easy task for those of you that are looking for um, just tips on polishing, protecting Teslas. Hopefully this can help you guys out. But what I'm really excited is this is the first time that a customer actually wants to be on film. And so we're going to be able to share with you guys um, her reaction when she comes to pick up the vehicle. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited. But for now, it's the end of the day and we'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. When I pulled this vehicle out the following morning to inspect for high spots, thankfully we didn't have any because the graphene coating is so easy to work with. But when I finally was able to see it in the sunlight, I was absolutely floored with how wet this paint absolutely looked. The polish did a fantastic job of just dialing in this paint. And then we locked in the condition of the paint with our graphene coating. And this vehicle looks better than new. If you do own a Tesla, I highly recommend that you check out these products because they're going to make maintenance a whole lot easier for you, especially being that you have soft paint. It's just gonna help save a lot of headache in the future. But hopefully we'll see this vehicle in six months for its first maintenance inspection. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification bell off to the side, and stay tuned for those updates. Deepen the red. Yeah. I think it has a nice amount of metallic flake in it. So applied the coating to the 
paint, the trim, the front headlights. I did this section right here with the coating just to make yes. it a little bit more hydrophobic. I mean, the glass is by nature. Yeah. How does the paint seem to you? Like good or? It actually, so Tesla paint is a little soft. I was able to find a combo um, that worked really well for just a one step. So we didn't have to do anything super aggressive. Um, How does it get swirls and scratches? Um, it could be in transit from the dealership. It could be from the factory itself. I mean, even just touching the paint, scuffing up against it. If, uh -huh. if you have, you know, with soft paint, yeah. um, you know, just gentle washing it and drying it. If, yeah. Yeah. When yeah. you were washing it, have you, you said you washed it, you only uh, had this a couple weeks? I, I got it, it washed at a place that only like they hand washed it. Okay. I washed but, it. Yeah, and I mean, even if you hand yeah. wash yeah. it, yeah. you know, there's dust. There's right, things right, that you know right. you could pick up on your mitt and push it around. I mean, right. um, but yeah, I mean the paint cleaned up really, really nicely. I did notice like this trim here. I coated it. Yeah. Um, but it was very sensitive to like chemicals. Okay. It didn't, like when yeah. I did the chemical decon, yeah. it did not like it. So I actually polished it just yeah. to bring back, yeah. um, remove that that little bit of staining that occurred. But yeah. it didn't affect the the appearance of it, to, like make it polished or, or anything like that. So. But I did coat that just so that way, hopefully yeah. that will help. If you yeah. were to go through the automatic car wash, I would just say, you know, just be careful because this seems to yeah. more sense. I saw it on YouTube, like I saw some people and it sort of like kind of ruined them. They were weird, but they found a way to fix it and they were showing it. Yes. It looks beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Heat. Yeah. Fireball. I'm so used to personifying them as a female. So that's I know, just I know, <laughs> I know. It, 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 my sister's like, are you sure it's a boy? Like, yeah, I don't know. So thanks to Eileen and her husband for allowing me to share with you guys their reaction. But I know she was really happy with the end result. I'm really thankful to have such great customers and great supporters of this channel. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And we'll see you in the next detail.